So here's where we all thought it was the end of Star Wars. How wrong we were. Everybody on YouTube, what is up? I'm Ty McDougall and welcome to my channel and welcome to my review of Star Wars Revenge of the Jedi. Uh, actually, that was George Lucas' original title for this movie. Could you imagine if you stuck with that? Wouldn't be his first bad idea. In 1983, Return of the Jedi was directed by Richard Marquand and was the conclusion to George Lucas' original saga. Picking up where the Empire Strikes Back left off. Lando and Chewie have tracked down their friend Han Solo, who had been frozen in carbonite and delivered to the top of the hut on Tatooine. And it's non-stop action from there. In my opinion, Return of the Jedi was the most visually epic of the original trilogy. I mean, the amount of puppet and creature costumes alone was better than anything they had in the first two films, aside from Yoda, of course. Jabba the Hutt, for example, was incredible. He weighed one ton, took three months and half a million dollars to build, and took at least three puppeteers to operate him. And not only was Jabba the biggest crime lord in the galaxy, but also the biggest asshole. He would drop people in the Rancor pit like it ain't no thing and treat women like his own personal sex slaves. He was grotesque, gluttonous, feared by many, but he did put Princess Leia into the sexiest outfit ever. But once the cameras were off Leia in her bikini, we had ourselves an epic good versus evil story that was chock full of action, adventure, revelations, and redemption. The entire first act of the movie centered around the rescue of Han Solo, and we see that Luke Skywalker had a plan all along. And when we see him fire up that green lightsaber, oh yeah, gets me every time. The Sarlacc Pit itself was an elevated, man-made set, as was Jabba's sail barge, which was loaded with dynamite for that final explosion as our heroes made their escape. Return of the Jedi was the end of a trilogy. The plot centered on the Rebellion as they prepared for another all-or-nothing assault on the Empire's newest Death Star, while the story centered on our key characters, especially in regards to Luke Skywalker and Darth Vader. Here, Luke appears to be a more mature individual. Wiser, more experienced, and more in tune with the Force, his mannerisms are more in line with the Jedi of old, as opposed to the reckless adventurer we saw in the last two films. Darth Vader, though still the intimidating antagonist, seems more human in a way, at least when it comes to any time spent with his son. Luke had said that he felt goodness with Invader, and that he hoped to reach and save Anakin Skywalker. The passing of Jedi Master Yoda on Dagobah was a sad but very well done scene, and Sir Alec Guinness returns as the spirit of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Through Obi-Wan, we learn more of Anakin's backstory, and that Leia is Luke's twin sister. During the lightsaber duel between Luke and Vader, Luke had been fighting to keep his emotions in check as to not to succumb to the dark side. But when Vader threatened to turn Leia to the dark side, Luke lost it. This was also our first introduction to Ian McDermott as the Emperor. Keep in mind that Ian was much younger when he first played this role, and he nailed it. We see growth for the other characters in this movie as well. Han and Leia make no attempt to hide their relationship. Lando and Han are friends once again, and are both generals in the Rebellion. And we see more bizarre alien creatures all coming together to take down the Empire. The Battle of Endor was an amazing spectacle that was far better than the Battle of Yavin in A New Hope. And those speeder bike chase scenes through the Redwoods of California had you on the edge of your seat, and are still enjoyable to watch even now. They pulled no punches with this movie, and for all intents and purposes, Return of the Jedi was the last Star Wars movie, and they were going to go out with a bang. And boy did they. The victory at the end of the movie was bittersweet. The Rebels won by destroying the Death Star, and Luke did manage to save his father, only to have him die in his arms. This is where the story of Anakin Skywalker comes full circle, as he redeems himself by becoming the Jedi he once was, only to have a few moments left with his son before he dies. But it was worth the sacrifice to save Luke in that one awesome moment when Anakin returned and destroyed the Emperor by tossing him over the chasm single-handedly. <laughs> Return of the Jedi was a fun Star Wars adventure and a well-written farewell to the characters and the fans. It was a beautiful story with some heartfelt moments, intense action, light comedy, and it wrapped everything up. Rotten Tomatoes gave this movie a 7.2 out of 10, and, like its two predecessors, Return of the Jedi has its share of flaws. But if I had one nitpick about this movie at all, it would be how Boba Fett bites it on Tatooine. I could go on with more nitpicks, but instead, I've got nothing but praise for this movie. So to wrap this up, guys, I'm giving Star Wars Episode VI Return of the Jedi a Titan rating of 9 out of 10. In a time where we had no idea what the future held for Star Wars, this series could not have ended any other way. But what do you guys think of Return of the Jedi, or of any of the Star Wars films? Are you a fan of the original trilogy, or are you a prequelist? Whatever your thoughts, share them in the comment box. 
I am Titan McDougall, and thanks for watching, guys. I do very much appreciate it. Be sure to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for my review of Episode 7, and I will see you on the next Titan Review. May the Force be with you.